if we understand our feelings, it's simply a footnote on our intellectual housekeeping. It is neither necessary nor sufficient. What is necessary and what is sufficient is feeling into the moment. I think this is where we got to at some point earlier in this, that the felt presence of immediate experience is the defining phenomenon of being. If you don't, if you can't reach it, you, you are in trouble. You need some kind of help, psychedelics, therapy, loving kindness, uh, something. And if you can reach it, then you have contacted the authentic domain of, of, of being. I almost said of humanness, but it goes deeper than that, because the, the animal world is living in that, uh, in that space. Well, I think because of the good offices of quantum physics and some other things, we are beginning to realize that things like chaos, like paradox, uh, these are not names for intellectual black holes. These are names for the sources of life's uh, richness and its advance, its creative advance lies in these things. Uh, reducing, as we have done over the past 200 years, the universe to a machine, uh, some kind of a machine, then robs it of meaning. And then we stand back and look at our lives and our societies and say, how come they have no meaning? It's because we labored like demons to make sure that they didn't have meaning and now we have no one to blame but ourselves for the gross simplification of reality and the betrayal of experience that we achieved in that uh, in that process. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. You know, years ago in Canada, there was a political party called the Social Credit Party, and they had a very complex scheme that nobody could understand. And they ran on the platform uh, under the motto, you don't have to understand social credit in order to vote for it. So this is sort of what you're talking about. <laughs> Why not? Yes. It, feelings are primary. The primary datum of experience is feeling. And then out of that comes... Uh, a, a logical reframing of experience. And, but the, and then still lower on the rung, and I maintain low enough on the rung that one shouldn't go that low, is an ideological recasting of, of, uh, of experience. And it's, it's a delicate thing. I mean, I'm not offering a simple answer here. It requires constant fine-tuning and intelligence. And to look at, and every day, I think, we have to, it's almost like we need, what is it that the Marxists used to do? Criticism, self-criticism. We need to be alert to ideology. It's constantly seducing us. Yeah, dialectic. But the idea of criticism, self-criticism, that you constantly, you and your colleagues or comrades, constantly search your behavior for betrayal of the ideology. I think we need to constantly search ourselves, not for the betrayal of ideology, but for the embracing of it. And say, oh dear, I'm starting to believe something. Slap, slap. Ah, oh, that feels better. Uh, uh, because these ideologies are incredibly draining and, and distracting. They, they, they get in the way between us and, and true feeling. On the other hand, if you don't apply logical razors to experience, then feeling is open to all kinds of interpretations that become somehow themselves springboards to ideology. I, I think it's really important to try to keep things as simple as possible because they will still be hellaciously complex 
if you are true to experience. The simplest explanation of what is going on here is still maddeningly Baroque. So throwing on flying saucers and papal plotting and the plans of great Atlantis only further exacerbate the problem. If you just deal with the given of our of our the fact of your your history and your destiny, things are quite complex enough. And of course, again, what the psychedelics do is provide a reference point in organism. They it's like a reset button. It says beyond ideology beyond cultural programming, beyond language, beyond hope, beyond fear, beyond expectation, there is the raw datum of experience. Here, have a dose. Didn't work, have a bigger dose. And if we keep returning to the raw datum of experience, then these other things, they will recrystallize around us but not with the imprisoning intensity that they have for straight people. We know that behind all the, this constipated social stability lies the chaos of the psychedelic experience. It's important to keep it in mind in very unpsychedelic situations. But people who have never broken through the cultural dream take it to be reality and and uh, commit crimes based on delusions about what is and isn't reality. Well, not to speak of whales and dolphins specifically, but nature as a dynamic field of activity beyond the reach of politicians, image makers, and so forth and so on. Uh, nature is the constant psychedelic companion of the human experience. Uh, I think, you know, we know this. That's why we crowd into cities and build walls and keep nature at bay. You, if you go into nature alone and don't eat much and don't speak much. Within 72 hours, you know, the hills speak and the winds confer with you and you are conveyed into an animate, caring, living, natural dynamic. But it's threatening to the ego. This is the first time in two hours I've used this word, uh, but the ego is a, is a, a maladaptive, uh, tumor-like growth in the personality that has been inculcated into you by the toxicity of culture. It is literally the response to toxic culture is the growth of ego. The more toxic the culture, the more the ego is revered as a natural value within that culture. So responding to dolphins and whales and anthills and termite swarms and these kinds of things is uh, an opening to the natural dynamic that's all around us. Many people never observe nature except when psychedelics force it upon them. But this is a very... I think if you feel afraid of psychedelics, but you want the juice that you may sense there, you know, take up wilderness camping and uh, do it assiduously. And though it's a slower process and you may not have specifically colored hallucinations, the conclusions that you will emerge with are essentially the same as the psychedelic voyager emerges from. And nature is deep, ordered, dynamical, and caring for the project of being. And so should we be.